so obviously, um, as the video editor, the thing that I was most interested in was what um, are we doing and how does it stack up to what the likes of the New York Times and AP are doing with video. And I was so happy to see that actually we aren't far behind. We're thinking, we're thinking correctly and we're also thinking of our audiences. Um, so that, that was encouraging. So um, just a little note on the way we monetize videos. Um, this is a quote from Gary Vaynerchuk, who is the head of VaynerMedia. They have millions of young millennial viewers. Um, and he said, and this is a quote, not my words, pre-roll is the worst shit on earth. Um, basically, they did studies with a young audience um, and served them pre-roll adverts and apparently irritation levels went up and they clicked off it. So the basic point of his story was if you're doing great video journalism or great video content, think of a better way to monetize it um, rather than just irritating your audience off the bat. It was a big lesson for us. And then of course the big thing that everybody was talking about was 360 and VR. And um, this is a quote from the same man who's really respected in the industry. He said, VR could become a reality to consumers in 20 years, but it's much further away than everybody in the industry currently thinks it is. Um, so this is an American context. They're looking at 20 years before everybody has a VR headset in their house. Um, and in a South African content, I think it could potentially be longer. Now, obviously, that's just a prediction. But the basics of what he's saying is true. Um, a lot of us are really fixated on VR when really we should be using this opportunity to get the basics of the technology right. So if you're thinking about employing VR in your business unit, um, these were a few points that I think were very helpful. The first is don't invest in a massive, um, really fancy VR system. He says, even AP, um, and actually Nathan Griffiths from AP, who was there, confirmed this, the New York Times and a lot of the people who are doing VR are using ordinary, bog-standard, consumer-grade uh, 360 cameras. In fact, the one that you can get in South Africa at the moment is a Nikon, and it will cost you 9,000 Rand of take a lot. That's what they're shooting on. Um, just because the technology is moving so fast that you, if you invest 100,000 Rand in a big VR kit now, it's like being the person who bought the first DVD player. You think you're cool until the next one comes out in two weeks' time. So they're using very basic um, stuff. The second is remember that one New York Times VR project takes up 250 gigs of space. Now, you try and download 250 gigs of information onto your computer now and see what's going to happen. So you need to invest in a good machine to get that VR going. The third is that it's going to take you time. If you've got 250 gigs of um, footage, that's literally multiple angles, and a lot of the software still requires you to stitch some of it together by yourself. You need to give yourself at least a month. So the New York Times and AP both work on month-long um, projects um, when obviously they're shooting multiple locations. Um, that's the amount of time that they give themselves. So the encouraging thing about this, because obviously it is an investment and a time investment, is that um, AP are seeing really big returns through deals with the likes of Samsung particularly, who've come on board, board to sponsor their VR projects. So it's a great opportunity to get commercial um, opportunities uh, um, involved. Uh, you could get a brand to sponsor your VR, and that's what AP is doing at the moment to fund their longer projects. Awesome.